Hello all, my name is Krishna Ayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we are going to see all the different types of cross-validation. Now, cross-validation is very, very much important, guys. Uh, I had already uploaded one video in making you understand what are the different types of cross-validation. But here, I just made you understand theoretically. So in this video, we are going to understand how to do it practically and try to cover this. There are around four to five different techniques. We'll try to see how we can actually do with Python programming language. And trust me, guys, uh, when when you're creating a machine learning project in one of the most important life cycle is something called as hyperparameter tuning. In the hyperparameter tuning, you will definitely be using cross validation techniques. Uh, so it is always good that you know what are the different types of cross validation techniques and when you should use which one. Right. So let's proceed in this particular example. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to take a cancer data set. That basically means that in this particular data set, you have data based on various features like this, like radius mean, texture mean, perimeter mean, area mean, smoothness mean, like this. Many features are there and you need to predict what type of cancer it is, right? So there are two categories in this and that we need to predict. That is a simple, simple uh, data set that we actually have. So initially we'll go and read this. We read this data set and this is my df.head. The next step, I have to go and see my independent and dependent features. So obviously my dependent features in sorry, independent features will be starting from this radius mean till the last feature. Okay. And then this diagnosis is my dependent feature. Okay. This particular field. So uh, from two to all the remaining columns, I will be taking that as an independent feature and this ID column you know, is not required because it is unique identifier. Okay. So I'll do that. So this is my independent and dependent feature. So let me just go and check out my X dot head. <coughs> so here you'll be able to see all the features here. But one problem is there guys, there is one more additional column, which is called as unnamed 32, which has all nan values. So it is better that we drop this particular uh, column because it is of no use. So in order to do is uh, what we are doing to do is that we are just going to write x dot drop na with axis equal to one. Perfect. Uh, let's execute the next line of code. Now we have this our x dot head. Now in order to see whether the data set is balanced or imbalanced or not. So what we do is that we can also use y dot value underscore counts. So here you'll be able to see B category of cancer that is benign is somewhere around uh, 357 and 212 is with respect to melanin. So, right. So all these two categories are there and with respect to this, you have this, the data set I've actually taken from the Kaggle uh, data set itself. Now let's go ahead with the different type of cross validation. The first technique that we usually use is called as holdout validation approach. And in this, we usually do a train test split. That's it. Most of the time you'll be doing train test split and that is nothing but hold out validation approach. This basically means that suppose if you have a data set, we try to do a train test split. We train our model with the training data set and we validate our model with the help of test data set. So pretty much simple and I hope everybody is familiar with this particular technique, which we usually do because in most of the machine learning algorithms, you usually go with this particular approach. So for this, uh, in this particular problem statement, I'm going to apply a decision tree classifier. And then I'm also going to import this train test split and it is actually present in sklearn.model selection. And then after using train test split, I just have to give my independent dependent feature, my test size, which is nothing but 30% and the random state is equal to zero. Here I'm just initializing decision tree classifier guys. Remember after this, you can also perform hyperparameter tuning. It is not on because here I've not provided any parameters. All the parameters are default. If you want to provide your own parameters, provide, uh, go and go ahead and do the hyperparameter tuning. But just to show an example of different types of cross validation, I'm using this particular approach. Then we do model dot fit on X train Y train. And then finally we find out the model dot scroll on S test Y test. So once I execute this particular result here, you'll be able to see that I'm having 91%. So guys, let's understand the disadvantages of this. Now here you'll be able to see that we are just doing a, a single type of train test split and that that train test split is defined from this random state value because it will be just randomly selected, right? 70 percentage will be selected in the training data set. 30 percentage will be selected in our test data set, right? Now, as I go on changing the random state, so suppose if I go and change it now, you can see that the percentage accuracy is 92%. Now, suppose if I make the random state as hundred again, it can become 94%. So 
we don't know like how randomly the uh, you know the train test split may happen and we may get different different accuracy so this may actually lead it to overfitting also it may also lead it to uh, underfitting also because we don't know based on the random state how we are splitting the data set we are getting the accuracy now in order to overcome this what we do is that we go with the second type which is called as k fold cross validation now in k fold cross validation we can make around 10 splits 20 splits based on our uh, you know and again how to select that particular split value i will i'll talk about it also now in k fold cross validation suppose if i say that i'm going to do 10 splits so 10 different splits of train and test data will be taken for all the different splits we'll try to apply a machine learning model and then we'll try to see what all accuracy we are getting finally the average mean of the accuracy is actually taken and told to the stakeholder right this is how you have to actually mention now in order to perform k fold k fold cross validation we just have to use sklearn dot model selection import k fold then i am going to initialize decision tree classifier now here you see this how i am initializing the object so i have created k fold underscore validation and here i have to use k fold as 10 10 basically suggests that i have to do 10 different splits now what is this 10 different splits just let me make you understand suppose i have a data set in the first split consider that it is going to select a random state as 0 and it is going to do some kind of train test split right then it, again with the the second split may be with respect to another random state right so like this multiple splits will be taken and with respect to each and every split that have that we have done and got the training and the test data set we are going to apply it for our machine learning models and get a separate accuracy so all the 10 if i am doing 10 splits i am going to get 10 different accuracy okay so this is the importance of k fold cross validation now here by doing this we'll be able to get the 10 different splits of train test data and then in order to verify and pass it to our model and see the accuracy what we do is that we use something called as cross val score so for this we will be using from sklearn dot model selection import cross val score in the cross val score we provide our model our x y and cv is equal to k fold underscore validation this cv is nothing but cross validation okay cross validation that basically means how many different types of train test split are there here we know that in our k fold underscore validation it has 10 different types of train and test split so the results that we are actually going to get will be a list of 10 different accuracy values okay so if i go and execute this and here in the last line what i'm doing i'm doing numpy dot mean mean of that particular result now here it is now here you can see that 10 different experiments let me count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so 10 different experiments are there and when we did np dot mean i am getting 92 percentage accuracy right now how how to decide that whether i have to go with 10 splits and all again it is a hyperparameter tuning parameter but understand that how do you have to tell this particular information to your stakeholder now from all this particular accuracy guys you will be able to see that you are getting the least accuracy as 87% and the maximum accuracy that you are able to get is somewhere around 98% so the to the stakeholder when you are defining this kind of model and most of the time we usually go with this particular technique unless and until your data set is not balanced okay so if i was getting this kind of accuracy i used to say my stakeholder that yes the maximum accuracy that i have actually got is 98 and the least accuracy that i have actually got is somewhere around 87% so by this the mean accuracy that i would like to say is somewhere around 92% okay so this range when you say right and if this range is quite huge again we have to do some kind of hyperparameter tuning if the range is very very small then no need of doing the hyperparameter tuning and your managers will be pretty much happy with this specific result so the second type that we have discussed is k fold cross validation now let's go with the next type stratified k fold cross validation now remember guys in stratified k fold cross validation what happens if your data set is imbalanced suppose if you you have uh, the data set in which your uh, one category count is somewhere around 900 and the second category suppose if i am considering a binary classification problem and the second category count is somewhere 100 so this ratio is nothing but 9 is to 1 right now when you have the specific ratio and if i try to do a train test split or uh, this k fold split you know correct proportion of elements will not be picked up with respect to both the categories it may be a situation that all all the categories that are selected will be from one category only right so stratified k fold cross validation makes sure that if we have a imbalanced data set if you are doing a, a train test split it will make sure that 
our independent fe with respect to our dependent features both the categories proportion will be taken in an approximate equal amount okay now suppose if i take an example suppose i have 700 uh, 700 data sets uh, probably with yes 300 data set probably with no now if i try to apply k fold cross validation suppose my 70 percentage of the information is there 70 percent is i'm giving in my train test split so what it will do it will try to take around 500 probably uh, i'll not say 500 at least 400 uh, from one category and 300 from the other category it will approximate the number of categories that is is going to take from both the classes okay so stratified k fold cross validation will be definitely used in an imbalanced data set pretty much simple and again guys all these things has been explained already in this particular video i've explained detailly you don't have to worry about it this someone had requested me to put the practical video also so i'm actually creating this particular video so from sklearn.model selection imports stratified k fold and in this particular k fold i'm doing five splits now if you go and see this particular splits and if you see the count of the data set of the data with respect to the categories it will be approximately equal then again i'm using cross val score and i'm giving model xy cv sk fold and i'm just trying to see this particular score now if i also want to see my scores you'll be able to see this <coughs> and again guys all the values will be where i am you need to know when to use what so here you can see 90 92 89 92 90 and the average accuracy that you're seeing is 91. Now coming to the last one, and always remember when do you use stratified k-fold cross validation? When you have an imbalanced data set. Then uh, you have something called as leave one out cross validation. In this, what you do, it is very much simple from the entire data set, you take only one data, you take it somewhere, right? This is leave out, uh, leave one out cross validation. There is also like leave p out cross validation. p basically means I'll tell you, okay? So in leave one out cross validation, what you do from the entire data set, you take, you pick up one data randomly as your test data and remaining all will be your training data. Like this, you do it for every sample. Suppose you are going to take, uh, suppose if I, if I say that I'm going to perform this leave one out on a data set based on the number of records, every time I'll pick up one record, all the remaining record will be actually my training data set. Then I may go and pick up my second record as my test and remaining all records will be my training data set. So like this, I'll be continuing doing all the operations. And uh, over here, in order to perform this here, you'll be able to see from sklearn.model uh, selection, I'm going to leave one out. If I go and see this particular parameter, guys, here you'll be able to see all the information, right? Uh, here it is saying they leave one out cross validator provides train test indices to split the data set into train test split each sample is used as once as a test data while the remaining samples from the training set now if i try to execute this okay it will take some time this will be the slowest because based on the number of records right now if i go and check out my results you will be able to see that how many data sets i'll be having this many number of values so this many number of different different samples they have taken by selecting one as a training data set, a test data set and remaining all as a training data set. So finally, if I use np.mean, then here you'll be able to see 93%, okay? Now this is perfect guys. There is also something called as leave p out cross validation. Instead of one, you can also specify values like I want three, four, five. That basically means from the entire data set in every iteration, we take our three data set, remaining all it by training data set and this will be our test. Then again, we select another three, then we go like this, right? So again, uh, I would suggest that uh, this is usually a cubersome process. It is hardly done. Uh, you should not try to do this uh, because in a real world scenario, you have millions of data set. It'll take a lot of time. Now this is another one, uh, which is called as repeated random train test split. Now this technique is a hybrid of traditional train test split and, and the K-fold cross validation method. So train test splitting also and K-fold, it is a combination of that. In this technique, we create random splits of the data and training test set manner and then repeat the process of splitting and evaluating the algorithm multiple times, just like cross validation method. Pretty much simple. Uh, shuffle split is the library that we'll be importing. And you can use this cross val score along with this. Here we are initially doing train test split. Now in the cross val score, we'll try to do the shuffle split. Okay. So once I execute this here, you'll be able to see that I'm getting 92%. So this was just to give an idea, guys, what are the different types of cross validation technique? Um, out of all this, uh, you know, whenever I get an imbalanced data set, what I do, I try definitely go with stratified uh, K-fold cross validation. 
in a normal data set i usually go with k4 cross validation but i have also used this kind of uh, repeated random train test split also so you should try multiple things to see how the accuracy is differing or not and definitely you should basically take the decision based on that so i hope you like this particular video uh, please do subscribe the channel if you are not already subscribed i'll see you in the next video have a great day thank you one all bye bye